الخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك غافر الخطيئات إنك قاض الحاجات إنك على كل شيء قدير وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الفاتحة مع الصلاة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهدي ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات آمالنا من يهد الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله انتجبه لبلاجته واختصه برسالته وأكرمه بالنبوته أمينا على غيبه ورحمة للعالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله وعليهم السلام أوصيكم عباد الله بتقوى الله وأخففكم من إقابه فإن الله ينجي من اتقاه بمفاوضتهم لا يمسهم سوء ولا هم يحزنون ويكرم من خافه يقيهم شر ما خافوا ويلقيهم نظرة وسرورة وأرغبكم في كرامة الله الدائمة وأخففكم إقابه الذي لا انقطاع له ولا نجاة لمن استوجبه فلا تغرنكم الدنيا ولا تركنوا إليها فإن هذا غرور كتب الله عليها وعلى أهلها الفناء فتزبدوا منها الذي يكرمكم الله به من التقوى والعمل الصالح فإنه لا يصل إلى الله من أعمال العباد إلا ما خلص منها ولا يتقبل الله إلا من المتقين أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في محكم كتابه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أفمن أسس بنيانه ألا تقوى من الله ورضوان خير أم من أسس بنيانه على شفا جرف عار فانحار به في نار جهنم والله هو لا يهد القوم الظالمين صدق الله العلي العظيم Respected brothers and sisters, Jamaatul Muslimin, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. After all due praise to Allah Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, our nourisher, our provider, our sustainer, our Lord, we seek best of his blessings and favors for his most beloved servant and best of his creation, our Nabi and our Rasul. Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and his purified household Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa salatu wa salam. Once again, with reciting this verse number 109 of Surah Mubarakayya Tawbah, we remind each other about taqwa. Where Almighty says, Afaman Asasa Bunyana. And the one who founds his building, his structure, his work, his movement, his plan, his life, his struggle on taqwa and piety and god weariness and in pursuit of the pleasure of almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is he better khair amman assasa or the one who founds his structure 
on the brink of a collapsing bank. Brink of a collapsing bank which collapses with him into the fire, the hell. Wallahu la yahdil qawm al-zwalimeen Indeed, Allah does not guide the wrongdoing folk, the oppressors, an oppressive nation. Respected brothers and sisters, last few days in history of our country can never be forgotten. What happened and what took place all of you are well aware. I don't need to repeat and I don't need to narrate. It is in front of you. Crisis, chaos, destruction and very dark gloomy picture of our community and society in front of us. Plenty of analysis already being given, written, shared on social media and so are in front of you. I'm not going to present something very maybe different. But what I would like to draw your attention is more of a Islamic perspective to this whole scenario and situation. There's absolutely no doubt it's a very complex phenomena, not a something simple and straightforward. With multiple layers also involved in creation of this explosion on a, such a big scale, of course, is not something which is a result of one particular incident or arrest of a particular individual. What I would like to draw your attention or the angle I would like to look at it and draw some lessons and reflect is the nature of this reaction, nature of this whole phenomena in our society. This phenomena in its very nature and the way it has been manifested is not first time by the way. We have seen similar reactions, similar rage and anger, number of occasions. Regularly service delivery protests in front of us. Fee must fall movement, for example, is in front of us. And also, in this last one and a half years after COVID-19 pandemic and how the situation is in front of us post-pandemic, after pandemic, during pandemic, it's all, if you look at it deeply, they all share more and less same fibers. 
First of all, all these phenomena, of course, exposes the real situation in our country. The real situation on the ground, on the grassroots level. Huge, huge gulf and gap between those who have and have not. Extremely high levels of poverty, desperation, hopelessness. And so on and so on. It's, it's there in all these different phenomena. But this time it was on a gigantic level and magnitude. This is one very important point we have to understand. And without understanding this real, real situation on the ground, we will never be able to understand or reflect on these, uh, you know, incidents or crises and chaoses. The question is how we react, how we respond to any challenge, to any problem, looting, stealing, destruction of infrastructure, burning down, you know, all, all that, of whatever is in front of us. You know, this is a regular phenomenon. But one thing I think we are mistaken, that looting and destruction of infrastructure and destruction of economy and burning down and lawlessness and breaking law and security and peace and committing crime, stealing, it's not only happens in the streets or in shopping malls like we saw it for the last few days. It is happening on much more bigger scale in the most civil and nice manner in the gallows of power by the people who are supposed to deliver, by the people who are supposed to lead, by the people who are supposed to be protectors of law. What we saw, breaking of law and committing crime and looting by some people in the streets, <laughs> you know, this is not something different than in its nature, by what is done by the leadership, unfortunately, the politician, for example. All the damage done by all these protests and all these people over the last few days, if you work out, the cost will be much still less than the cost of corruption. If you look at no humanity, no morality, no this, that, all these things you speak about. How people elected, how people looted, and how people burned down, and so on and so on. This is no different than the people who stole money from the COVID-19 fund. The difference.
people suffering people dying whole country suffering from this terrible virus this plague this pandemic this huge huge challenge and the money and the funds and the resources which were supposed to reach out to the people to help them out to rescue them from the death so called protectors of law did not feel ashamed to steal to buy cars to have luxuries and forget them what the difference corruption stealing on the level where we you know example of state capture is in front of us where we saw that whole country the whole state and whole you know system is taken by ransom basically by few individuals by few individuals and everybody front of us in any place and point you know i'm not talking about one individual two individual three four people. you place any point this story is unfortunately there question is that this corruption this dishonesty this on dishonesty this stealing of the resources of our people country how much damage it has done how much suffering it has brought to the people and now it is very clear that we reaching to the point of explosion where there are people of course who cannot take it any more and they look for any opportunity for any window to show and to manifest their anger their desperation their situation that nobody you know of course there are people who will teach morality and akhlaq that you have a right of protest but you must protest like that uh, while they themselves when they steal when they empty the treasure of whole nation they don't remember morality when they steal from the people suffering from corona and covid 19 they don't remember they don't want to be civil somebody comes and loots a store then they remember that you have a right of protest but you're not supposed to protest like that yes a right of protest is there but if civil right of protest does not reach anywhere falls on the deaf ears it is that's how it happens that's how it goes then anger and rage comes and this anger and rage of course explodes this is one aspect of the story which i would like to draw your attention brothers and sisters so basically looters thieves criminals both sides those who are giving sermons of good citizenship and law abiding behavior to those who are unfortunately involved in this criminal activities
But there is another problem, and that is my point of discussion, which I would like to draw your attention. Yes, indeed, this country is hurt, injured, full of wounds, from wounds of apartheid, injustice and oppression, to wounds of corruption incapable leadership and political bankruptcy, no doubt. But at the same time, what is common in all these phenomena from a man in the street who commits a crime or loots and steals to that minister or even president or whoever, whatever, who takes millions of rands in bribes. One common fiber is there, that we have lost and completely lost on the forefront of morality and akhlaq and iman and taqwa. When we react, when we respond, we think we are free to respond in whatever may possible. In whatever way possible, there we believe that, you know, because I cannot enjoy, so why anybody else enjoy? Let us break it. There comes really Islamic angle, which I would like to bring, Islamic perspective I would like to bring. The ayat of Quran from Surah Mubarakah Tawbah, which I recited for you, says, anything which is not based upon taqwa, God consciousness, realization of this fact that whoever you are, in whatever situation you are, whatever challenges you are facing, pressures, desperation, stress, Poverty, nothing justifies you to build, to develop, to establish your reaction, movement, struggle, fight or whatever on anything but taqwa of Allah. Let me read it. أَفَمَنْ نَسَّسَ بُنْيَانَهُ أَلَا تَقْوَى مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرِدْوَانْ خَيْرٌ Quran challenges in form of question. Think about it. Think about it. You have option to build your life, your struggle on taqwa, on fear of Allah, on iman, on consciousness and realization that we are responsible in our actions before Allah and pleasure of Almighty Allah. Is this better or any other way? And then Quran gives example that whenever anything which is being established on anything other than taqwa is like establishing your building, your house, your structure, on the brink of collapsing bank, very soon it will collapse. Allah does not guide oppressive people, unjust people. This is really important to understand that unfortunately this challenge of akhlaq, iman, and taqwa, morality, faith, disappeared from our society. Our leadership, political leadership, 
give, give the least important to that. But slowly this thing completely gone. And therefore when we react and we respond from any corner, I'm not talking about only political leaders when they commit corruption and steal and commit theft to those people who attack the properties, attack the human life, killed people, all of, all of, all of us, all of these different expression has one challenge that we do not have, the smallest of compass of morality with us, criteria of morality with us, the smallest of fear of God and presence of God in our life, in our reaction, in our response. We forget. And that's really something. A lot of time we justify, and I would like to now bring your attention to this important point. A lot of people now all of a sudden talking about revolution, and they give slogans, and these leftist ideologies that Revolution always start with criminality, and I don't know, explosion is important, and without explosion, you will never come right now, sorry. Islam, and especially a school of Ahlul Bayt, and political thought of Amir al mumin Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi salatu wassalam, does not accept this approach. When you want to Revolution, revolutionize criminality. No, sorry. It will not produce any revolution. When they came to Amir al Mumin Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu was salam, Allahu Akbar, asking him to be political, asking him to use some tricks, what he said, just this one sentence. أَتَأْمُرُونِي أَنْ أَتَلُبُ النَّسْرَ بِالْجَوْرِ Allahu Akbar. You people who came to give me advice and mashwara and consultation, you want to say to me that I should seek help of injustice to establish justice? I take root of operation and atlub nasra bil jawr. Allahu Akbar. This is Ali. Refused. Refused. Therefore, maybe Ali was not a very successful politician <laughs> because was not ready to Compromise on this morality, on akhlaq, on values. How we react, how we respond. And it's, it's not really, um, please don't think that I'm talking about only looting. Looting, of course. Burning down resources, irrational, long-term effects. And the people who will suffer the most will be again, unfortunately, the poorest of the poor. There's absolutely no doubt about it. Person does not think in anger and rage. And that's how he goes on. When you have no presence of God, when you have no presence of consciousness or realization of this, then you do whatever you do without thinking. That is terrible. But also the way people reacted, I would like to add here. You know, all of that is, you know, immediately there were people, of course, some people, got an opportunity and chance to rob, to loot, to get whatever they can get, I don't know. And they did what they did. And all the media and social media and videos and clips showed to the whole world that ugly, ugly face of, unfortunately, our country. But the way people reacted also, unfortunately, another class, so supposedly very civil class, so supposedly, you know, very on a higher moral grounds, how they reacted. 
especially in Natal, they reacted with the racism. This phenomena was originally not a racism, was not a racist phenomena. Arrest of somebody, of course, some ethnic issues and so on, and of course, who was behind the scenes playing this game, that's a different story, I don't want to go. How different political parties tried to score, tried to, all that together. But some people reacted by just looking at the color of the skin of the people who were busy looting. Because they are blind, they don't see human being as human being. They only see people with the color of their skin. And therefore, immediately they interpreted it with the color of his skin. And immediately reacted and responded to it in the most ugly and racist form. By shooting on them, by attacking on them, by declaring war on them, by so-called defending economy and I don't know, property and so on. But in the most racist form. Response was also again another racist form from the other side. Become a racial war. And how long that will continue, it is really unpredictable because that is much more than just looting a, a store and a supermarket. Huh? That will, in a couple of years, will come back. But the seed of hate based upon racism and killing of the people based purely upon being black, that is not going to disappear. That is not going to be easily repaired. There again comes the issue of morality. Then it's again come issue of taqwa. Then it comes again issue of that. How you react and respond. It is at that point where same big thieves, big thieves in form of political parties and political leaders come to exploit, to catch fish in the Dirty water, nobody can see, you know. I can never forget that beautiful, beautiful sentence of Mawla Amir al Mumneen again, Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi salatu was salam. And he says, Wallahi, ma ma'aviya to be adha minni, wala kinnahu, yagdir wa yafjur, wala don't think that Mahavya is more shrewder than me, more cunning than me. I'm much more cunning, I can be much more shrewd, smart than Mahavya. But he deceives Yagdar and Yafjur commits evil deeds. Had it not been for karahiyat, reprehensibility of evil deeds and deceit, I would have been the most cunning, shrewd of all the men. Lakuntum in adhan nas. Ali is saying, no one can compete with me in my shrewdness. No one. No one. وَلَكِنْ كُلُّ غَدَرَةٍ فَجَرَةٍ وَكُلُّ فَجَرَةٍ كَفَرٍ But every, every deceit is a sin and every sin is disobedience of Allah. And every deceitful person have a banner by which he will be recognized on the day of judgment. Allahu Akbar. And then this this last sentence, please, please, brothers and sisters, open your minds, even the revolutionaries, coming up with your theories and philosophy. What Ali is saying, Wallahi, mastaghfalu bil makida, wala astaghmazu bil shadida. Very deep, very deep. He says, by Allah, I cannot be made forgetful by strategy. Yo. I cannot be made forgetful by 
स्ट्रेटेजी नॉर आई कैन बी ओवर पावर्ड बाय हार्डशिप्स रीड द सेंटेंस ओवर एंड ओवर वट अली से मोहम्मद मोहम्मद अल्लाह वल्लाह मस्तगफलु बिल मखीदा वला अस्तगमजु बिल शदीदा बाय गॉड आई स्वीर आई कैन नॉट बी मेड फॉरगेटफुल आई कैन नॉट लूज माय पाथ माय डायरेक्शन बाय स्ट्रेटजी स्ट्रेटजी नॉर कैन आई बी ओवरपावर्ड बाय हार्डशिप्स यस हार्डशिप्स push you push you push you but those who follow ali and those who are in the school of islam on the school of ahli al-bayt and the school of this hero and leader of all the revolutionaries these hardships never deviate them from the path of justice pushing them to racism pushing them to breaking the law pushing them to do things irrational long term nothing but destruction nothing but destruction brothers and sisters i would like to conclude by saying we really need faith in allah we really need presence of god we really need consciousness and recognition of our accountability before our creator almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala in our life and only then it is possible on those levels where we commit theft in form of corruption and so on and so on and looting and burning and killing in the streets nothing can justify and this is a phenomena i am saying this is a problem we spoke about gbv gender based violence for example in our society we speak about violence in general in our society we speak about murder we speak all these things wherever you look the way we act toward women for example is such a big issue we have in this worst time of pandemic how this genocide against women this femicide for example was spread it comes back to the same root issue the same cause that fiber which is completely broken ausikum ibadallah wa nafsi bi taqwa allah wa asmuna allah wa iyyakum bi taqwa wa jar al akhirat khairan lana wa lakum fa inna khair al hadith wa ablagh mu'izat al muttaqin kitab allah al aziz al hakim bismillah ar rahman ar rahim wal asr inna al insana lafi khusr الا الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر